Hello everyone, wrestlers, YouTubers, welcome to another episode of Dave and Jay's Powerbomb AEW Recap Talk Show. This, we're doing the recap for uh, AEW Dynamite. Um, I don't even know what the date is today, March 4th. Uh, let me just double check that. I'm Sounds sure good. It's like, uh, maybe March 4th, yeah. Yep, yeah, March, March 4th. 4th. That's okay. right. All right, so, so AEW Dynamite, March 4th. This is the recap show, and the show started off with uh, John Moxley, uh, your new WWE, or <laughs> your new AEW World Heavyweight Champion, and uh, I don't know, I'm not really on board with that. What do you think? You said something. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <sighs> That's a trigger for you. John Moxley and Champion used in the same sentence. No, you use that company we do not talk about. That's true, that's true. I got a little flabbergasted there. So, yeah, who cares about Moxley? Just, just get to the matches. I mean, we can talk about Moxley after. Because he's like, oh, I'm the big guy now. I'm going to be at the end of the fucking show. So. But we must touch upon... Uh, so, yeah, uh, Jericho came out and interrupted uh, Moxley's uh, victory speech. And he yeah. said that him and Sammy are going to challenge Moxley and uh, and Darby Allen for yeah. a tag team match. And if Le Champion loses, he's uh, taking a little break for 60 days. 60-day break without Le Champion. Is he going to work on a Fozzie album or something? Yeah. Who knows? It, it doesn't matter. Who knows? It's, it's like Le Champion. There's no way he can lose twice. That's true. That's true. No way. So that is how they opened the show. And then we had a match. SCU versus The Dark Order. Join the Dark Order dot com. Join the Dark Order dot com. What is this hand thing about? I noticed they kept doing this weird hand thing in the match. <laughs> I'm like, what, what's going on here? And I'm like, no, don't do that, Jay. To just do this. <laughs> They're still on the lookout for the Exalted One. Like, who is he? Like, JR is even up in arms tonight. Like, the Exalted One. Who is he? Who is he? I'm going to call it, it's Cody Rhodes. I'm going to call it, it's <laughs> Cody Rhodes and the Dark One. It's the Exalted One, or whatever you want to call him. I'm going to throw a prediction out there and say that it's going to be Matt Hardy. I've been hearing some talk on the grapevine that uh, Matt Hardy's WWE contract has expired. He will not be renewing. And if he goes full broken Matt Hardy mode on the AEW and becomes the exalted one for Dark Order, we could be in for some entertaining stuff to come. We both have our predictions. I'll be right because, you know, I'm like the MJF of, uh, right here. Right of our now, little, little, little duo, duo here. here. I'm the MJF and... Yeah, who knows who ever you are? All right, well, <laughs> let's check the uh, Twitter feed here to see what happens. Uh, we already watched it, but this yeah. just helps remind us. Um, yeah, so SCU and Colt Cabana defeated the Dark Order. Dark Order weren't too pleased about it. Uh, I think Evo Uno hopped on the mic and said the Exalted One is coming. Yeah, so, and then they did their regular thing of like numbers, the beat down. That's right. Which and is just classic. Then uh, we had an appearance from Dr. Britt Baker uh, giving Tony Schiavone a custom latte because we all are familiar at this point with Tony Schiavone's uh, struggle at uh, Starbucks, which I'm assuming happened after the demise of WCW Nitro. But he's on the right track again, and I'm, I'm happy to have him on commentary anyways. Oh, yeah. I think he's good. You know, it brings that nostalgia factor back. But then they were, uh, she was doing guest commentary for uh, Big Swole, Big Swole versus the librarian, Leva Bates. That match was so fast. I was like, oh, the match is beginning. I had to go do something <laughs> in the room for about 15 seconds. Come back in the room. I was like, oh, match is, match is over. It's so, over. And, and this is crazy. It, like, you thought, you know, after the criticism, because a lot of uh, other people criticized the, uh, the women's talent of AEW and you would think they were like okay we're, we're going to go put on a show like either was it because of time constraint or was it just because of like we don't know what to do fuck it just go out there and just make a make a performance it was it was shameful yeah I mean, that yeah. was not the direction you should have went for the women's for the story give us give us more we want more let me look we want better story from you guys. AW, 
and and you know it's just give these athletes more you guys do you know what you, you guys writing for this shit <laughs> fucking better Oof. than john moxley right now in my fucking heart let's go back to the show he's got a heart okay so yeah it's basically just a squash match a big swall uh they're probably setting her up to be a powerful competitor to give nyla rose the native beast to run for her money yeah. in the weeks to come that looks like what they're setting up for but yeah everything you said i feel the same way let's go on to the next match what's the next match i'm gonna check here oh oh yes uh we got cody rhodes Cody Rhodes oh, comes that, out. It's Jake the Snake. That's right. That's right. So Cody Rhodes comes out. Uh, he's apologizing to us for losing against G MJF, I guess. Like, there, there's a tear. <laughs> what is it? It's like, oh, man, did I get drunk, fucked up, got a tattoo, and now I'm having this full remorse ride? <laughs> yeah, uh, the neck tattoo. Come on, Dark Order. It's... I mean, I'm... shit, Cody Rhodes. Did I say that again? Cody Rhodes is going to be the exalted one? He's going to be like in some kind of well, big old he's... space station. That's no space station. It's Cody Rhodes, the Dark Order. He's clearly into self-mutilation, so I mean, yeah. yeah, maybe he is the exalted one. Who yeah, knows? Jake, Jake the Snake was Jake the Snake. Yeah, so Jake the Snake comes out, and he's like basically telling Cody to be a man, man up. Jake the Snake says he never cried when he lost matches over at the other company. He so, just drank his feelings. That's right, but he also came out and said... I'm 20 years sober. Yeah, he, yeah, I deserve yeah. this. So I guess he's got an AEW contract. And he was saying he's going to bring out a member of the dark side. Something alluding he's, to the dark like, side. You, know, you keep talking about Pulps. He's, 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 he's Emperor Palpatine. That's and right. Cody is Anakin. Losers. That could be interesting. That could yeah, be that, interesting. That's my whole thing. I swear to God, that's what's going on. Should <laughs> so, we even talk about this more? Like, it was an awesome promo. Jake the Snake was like, I'm Jake the Snake and all of us fanboys from like we were watching wrestling in the 80s and 90s was like oh. and you know it was pretty awesome seeing the legend out there and Jake the Snake he looked great to his credit like this is the healthiest I've ever seen Jake the Snake look in 20 years I guess yep probably so we'll see where this goes Cody's neck tattoo still not big on that but he's all in now and I guess that that's kind of his way of proving it. Like, there's no yeah. going back now, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, but, so uh, nice for that laser surgery to remove it. Then we had Chucky T, Chuck Taylor, going one on one against Pac. And uh, Chucky T was accompanied by the best friends, including Orange Cassidy, who yeah. gave Pac a run for his money on Saturday night at Revolution. And uh, this match kind of just went the way we figured it would, right? Like, Pac with the win. Yeah. And um, there's some other stuff that happened, too, that uh, I'm trying to recall. There was so much uh, action tonight. Yeah, the, um, um, uh, um, I don't know. The, yes. Uh, Jurassic I, Express. No, it wasn't no, Jurassic Express. Express. It, it was uh, the there. Lucha Brothers, the Lucha Brothers yeah. came out to uh, beat down uh, the rest of uh, the best friends, including Orange Cassidy. Yeah. And then Pac got on the mic and said, hey, we're a new team called the Death Circle. And uh, Death Triangle, was Death it? Triangle yeah. that's it. I got Inner Circle on the brain. Death Triangle. So Lucha Brothers, Pac, new faction called Death Triangle. They can be devastating because the three of those are the most, some of the most phenomenal talents on the roster for sure. And I'm a big fan of Lucha Bros. Pac's doing his thing. So that's going to be great. And they're probably going to feud with best friends for a bit and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it, it's, it's all about story, but I'm... Um... Digging where the soap opera is taking oh, yeah. <laughs> Best tag division in any federation, any company, and their trios matches are great as well. So let's see what else happened here. Um, oh, yes. I just want to make sure I'm skipping anything. So Lucha Brothers. And then we have Jake Hagar versus QT Marshall, who is a member of that Nightmare family. You know... The thing you see every time Cody turns around. This is the power of Jake Hagar. He, the only man who will be able to stop him would be MJF. <laughs> Let's hope that Jake Hagar doesn't get on MJF's radar anytime soon. Because yeah. we don't want to slow down Jake Hagar's momentum. Yeah, he's, he's doing awesome. He is? I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying him. I'm like, yeah, sure, he may be a scumbag in the show, but I was like, 
I'm digging it. I'm digging. I'm digging. Digging you, man. Yeah, QT Marshall put up a valiant effort, but at the end of the day, Jake Hagar of his superior MMA credibility and skills using that yeah. uh, what was it, the side triangle choke sleeper or something? That wasn't a choke, side triangle sleeper or something. It's pretty devastating. It's a real yeah, move. Yeah, he was basically like holding him up and like, and uh, yeah, he's but that, that's his uh, his his finisher. It seems like this uh, putting people to sleep. Yeah, and we'll talk more about that later mm -hmm. all right all right so uh what happened oh yeah so jake hagar wouldn't release qt marshall dustin tried getting involved a bunch of people got oh, yeah, involved yeah, yeah. and everybody and just kind of was yeah uh, a little chaos family royal rumble kind of action hagar took out like eight i'm mean, not eight people but six people i believe it was like qt marshall yeah and then uh dustin and then i think one of the uh young bucks ran out one of them they said couldn't travel yeah uh so yeah one of the young bucks came out and then it was someone else and then uh hangman adam page came out and it was like Who's he going to help? Like, is he, like, still friends with, like, the elite? Or is he going to help out the death triangle? And uh, he made his decision. I'll let you uh, let them know what it is, if you remember. He uh, <laughs> decided to keep... Uh, keep drinking. Keep drinking pretty well. But, uh, yes, he was drinking his iced tea in his cup. It was an iced tea. I'm sure, oh, maybe. I don't know. But, no, man, it's totally iced tea. Yeah, you don't think he's drinking on the job? No. He's taking drinks from fans and stuff afterwards. The chuds, as you... Refer to them as oh, that's his problem if he wants to get some virus, <laughs> a little corona action from a <laughs> cup of corona. <laughs> okay, I totally like digress. What was I talking about? Oh, we're talking about Hangman on page. He ran out and he kept his oh, yeah, friends yeah, in the elite. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. oh, just, like, Willie oh, or uh, Wony, uh, is he gonna the, side the, with uh, the, Pop the grand, and Death the, Triangle? I'm gonna beat down everybody. Yeah, he and, helped his yeah. boys. So, yeah, that was all right. Um, yeah, yeah, they had some guys come out here and yeah. So then uh, we have a promo from MJF. He's uh, ripping on Cody pretty hard. He's got a new T-shirt, um, and he's making some bold predictions for uh, 2020. It, I hope on Twitter it, it, it trends. Hashtag, I pin Cody. Yes, the T-shirt says, I pin Cody. And he's making some bold predictions. He's saying this is the year of MJF. He's going to be world AEW World Heavyweight Champion. He doesn't care who it, who it is. It was Moxley. Uh, I think he said... Uh, Jericho, yeah. Hawk, like he's going through heels and faces. He doesn't care, and he's undefeated uh, thus far. So uh, maybe Cody's just going to drop the issue with him, and MJF's going to make things interesting of Moxley because Moxley needs it. Moxley needs a heel like MJF to keep it interesting just and to Moxley, take it to that Moxley, level. Moxley needs anything to keep him interesting. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, <sighs> he didn't show up tonight, and we're going to get into more of that later. So, what else do we got here? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so I believe this was the main event next, uh, the final match. So, uh, we had uh, the uh, we had Jericho yeah. and the uh, Spanish sex yeah. god, uh, Sammy Guevara, versus Darby Allen and John Moxley. So, Darby made his uh, way to the ring first. Everybody made their way. Uh, no, yeah, Inner Circle came in first, yeah. yeah. And Darby. Yeah, and Darby. And Darby, like, you know, did the regular thing. Then Moxley came in, last as a champ. But you know what that piece of trash does? He comes on in, he just picks on some random fans, and yeah. uh, he got the beats. He, he, he got what he deserved. It looked to me like he moshed off some fans in the audience, and then they weren't having it. No, it, it's like good, good for the fans standing up to them, and it was really cool because these guys looked like they dressed up as their, some of their favorite wrestlers there. Like, you had ha I saw, I saw it's, one guy looked like he was dressed like Hager, which was awesome. He was even trying to do the do the knee, trying to like look at everything. <laughs> And, and and the thing was, you know, and at, the other guy looked like Ortiz, and the other guy yeah. looked like Santana. He even had the eye patch on, right? Yeah, and, and you know what? At, you know, halfway through the beating, it looked like they were just helping John Moxley try to get home <laughs> in the trash. You know, we, 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 we you know we even saw like uh, he was just kind of like like at one point he was on a roll. It felt and, like it, he was at home. Yeah, it felt like he was at peace, rolling around in that trash that the inner circle dumped on him. It wasn't crazy fans. We was just having some fun with you guys. No man, those, those, <laughs> he just 
You got the stuffing kicked out of him by Hagar, Ortiz, and Santana. No, that was just fans cosplaying. <laughs> this is a cosplaying. No, because it, innocent the cosplaying. Match, you got to see the guys, you know, hanging out at the side of the ring. Like, how did they get just get down and magically appear? It's like it's. Why is he just garbage? He just beat, picked on some fans, and the fans <laughs> retaliated. So then Moxley went to sleep. Hagar linked them up with that what, that triangle sleeper, side sleeper. It's, yeah, it's effective. Yeah. Yeah, he must have been watching a lot of Hagar's videos. Yeah. And then, um, so it basically became a two-on-one <laughs> handicap match with Darby Allen versus the cream of the crop of the inner circle, Sammy Guevara, and yeah. of course Le Champion. And uh, hard-fought match by Darby Allen, but I mean, could he really withstand the odds? Like, it's Le Champion for goodness sakes. Yeah, no, like, what's Coffin Dropper thinking? He, he's like, oh, I skated and I got some boo-boos <laughs> hitting some concrete. Like, uh, it's great and all that, you know, you're staying on a skateboard. <laughs> but you know what? I was actually really impressed when you cough and dropped all four of the members outside the ring uh, off the top rope. That I was think pretty cool. Jericho was barely able to get out of the way, but then Darby Allen went for that toupee suicida, Sita, as Excalibur affectionately calls it, yeah. and he got caught with the Judas effect. Yeah. Elbow to the face, diving outside the ring. We've got a great picture of it up there, and uh, yeah, like. I think it was, it was well done. I mean, I love seeing Le Champion win. Yeah. And since he won, we have 60 more days of Le Champion because he's not going to take that 60-day sabbatical. I thought when they first announced that he was going to go on tour of Fozzie, he was like, oh my God, it's going to be eight episodes of Le Champion and Mox leave the title. What the fuck's going to happen? Yeah, I don't know. I thought he might have like threw the whole match. It's just that he didn't want to deal with Moxley. He's like, it smells like... Dumpster. Aww. That's what the champion is saying. <laughs> but then uh, he got out of the dumpster fire and he came back down to the ring and tried to uh, take on like five guys or something. This this is a problem with wrestlers. He should not be able to do that. Like, I'm going to say Moxley because he's like a real man. Unlike, uh, who did I say? Jericho's the real man. Okay, Moxley sorry. is. I don't know, how do you like to refer to him as human trash? Human, human trash, yeah. But you know, he cannot. He should. He's no Hagar. He shouldn't he's be no able, Hagar. He shouldn't be able to like, go in there and just brave. Beat, beat six people down like that. He should be tested for steroids. Okay. Okay. Take the handicap already once. He did that eye shit. I was not on board with that at all. I yeah. Did, I did and, not. And, and and you know what? No, it should be three strikes because he even picked on fans. He did. And he should be stripped as a It was some dark, was some dark order cosplayers, title. actually. They had the dark order masks on. Yeah. There's some real I'm glad dark order I'm finally see in my way, you piece of garbage. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. So then, yeah, Moxley wakes <laughs> up from that nap that uh, Hagar put him to sleep with. Yeah. And then stumbles in there. And then he just gets smashed out, which was great. They gave him that uh, triple power bomb made famous yeah, by that was awesome, actually. Uh, Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley's old team of uh, the Shield back in that other company that I got elbowed in the head earlier from uh, mistakenly referring to. Yeah, they had to go name. up on there and they're like, "This guy is uh, on steroids right now. We gotta take we him need, down. We need, we need to take a really big, powerful move." <laughs> Good for the boys. And they dropped him through stage through a ta- off the stage through a table, and that's how we ended the show. And I mean, let's let's tell our thoughts on the show. It was a good show, but you could tell it was like more they were doing the story structure, laying the foundation yeah. for like the next line of things that are going to be happening, leading up to our next pay per view. It, it's almost old impossible. feuds were sud- settled. Yeah, and, and we're going to new stuff. Yeah, and, I think. And, uh, sure. Reason why it wasn't as you know as intense because like how else do you get more intense than the last pay per view? How do you top that exactly? Yeah. So I mean it was a great show. Uh, the women's match I thought was pointless. That was a squash match. It just should have been left on AEW Dark and maybe filled it with like something else. Like I don't know why Britt Baker hasn't been like competing in the ring over the past like I don't know month it seems like. But you know her promos are all right. And uh, yeah, this was just kind of like it seemed slow in comparison to the pay-per-view but that pay-per-view was going like 200 miles an hour so yeah yeah maybe it's just my brain trying to switch gears and i don't know but yeah it's a great show i don't know what they're doing on nxt uh tonight and i don't care i'm le champion for life and he doesn't have to go away for 60 days aew is best and you know what thanks for watching dave and jay's Bravo bomb!
This is for mentioning that other company. Oh, my spleen!